G'day and welcome to Redriven, and because you guys asked for it, welcome to part two of our top five underrated performance cars under $15,000 list. Now we're assuming that you've seen part one, hence why you're watching part two at all, but if you haven't seen part one, hit pause now and click on this link up here. That's part one and it explains all of the rules. But in saying that, for those of us that have seen part one, we are actually gonna be bending our own rules on this list. See, we, we try to make these cars as internationally available as possible, but the cars in this list, they have missed out on being exported to some pretty big markets, like say North America, but we feel like they make for good contenders anyway. So look, kicking things off, they're small, they're French, they're bloody awesome, but they come with a pretty big warning. It's the Renault Clio Sport 182 Cup. A true performance car isn't just about power and acceleration numbers. It has to get under your skin. It has to make you feel alive. It has to connect you with the machinery that you're piloting. It has to engage you on multiple levels. And my God, does the Clio Sport 182 Cup do exactly that. Based on the second generation, small, budget conscious Clio hatch of the late 1990s and early noughties, the Sport 182 Cup followed a predictable recipe, but it executed it perfectly. Sticking a powerful two liter engine in the front of a tiny light hatchback and attempting to control all of the resulting dynamic characteristics by equipping the little pocket rocket with sublime levels of suspension and chassis tuning turns the Clio into arguably one of the greatest hot hashes ever. And it can be all yours for less than 15,000 Australian dollars. Even really good limited edition examples are available for just over this budget. But while the Clio Sport 102 Cup is a truly fabulous thing to drive, it's not all good news. As remember, it is based on a budget conscious small French hatchback. So the interior plastics are about as cheap and harsh as they come. The driving position is uh, interesting to put it politely. The electronics have quite the reputation for being temperamental and it is absolutely critical that servicing and maintenance has been thorough. And while the newer Clio models and various larger and more powerful Megane RS variants seem to draw all of the performance Renault attention, find a well cared for and loved example of the Clio Sport 182 Cup and you're gonna have yourself a criminally underrated performance car. Now look, a few of you are probably gonna accuse me of being biased on this next car because I actually own one, it's my daily driver. It's right here, but I bought it because it is such an underrated performance car. It's the Nissan Stagia. Okay, specifically we're talking about the M35 Stagia, and in particular, any fitted with the 2.5 litre turbocharged or 3.5 litre naturally aspirated V6 engines. Look, there's nothing wrong with the less powerful engines, but we're talking performance cars here, and the extra spice from these two power plants really gets the best out of the big Nissan. Let's focus on my car's spec, which is arguably the more available M35 Stagia internationally, and it can be had here in Australia for well under the $15,000 budget. And honestly, Honestly, what's not to love here? A funky looking wagon body? You'd be amazed at how many people assume it's a Volvo. It has a 206 kilowatt turbocharged six cylinder engine, although we have it on very good authority that the uh, claimed power figure is extremely conservative. Power is sent to all four wheels, but thanks to Nissan's Atessa all wheel drive system, the Stagia will happily wag its tail exiting a corner. But when you're bored with power slides, being a little bit more disciplined with your steering and throttle inputs just results in immense traction and forward thrust. And look, yes, it is a big car, but it rides and handles incredibly well for what it is. Before buying mine, I was honestly expecting it to feel like piloting a boat, but it sits flat through the corners and yet on the freeway or even on a rough country road, it's super comfortable. Look, the Stagia, it, it isn't some sort of scalpel sharp tool to carve up a winding road or a track day, but if you need serious practicality, but still wanna laugh your ass off when you're sliding through some corners, or you want that sensation of sinking into your seat every time you put your foot down, the Stagia is the answer, but it, it's one everyone seems to have forgotten about. Okay, yes, I am a bit biased, but only because the Stagia is such a great thing. But in all honesty, it's not all good news. Check out our full review just up here to see what I'm talking about. Okay, next up, it's another practical option, but this time it's a little bit smaller and it's front wheel drive, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Here in Australia, we call it the Ford Mondeo XR5, but you might call it the Mondeo 2.5T or maybe the Mondeo Titanium X. So what we basically have here is a 2007 to 2014 Mark IV Ford Mondeo with the turbocharged 2.5 litre five cylinder Volvo engine from the Focus ST bolted under the bonnet. Now in part one last week, we explained that all of the cars that make up this list, they're not necessarily the fastest or the best handling or the most capable. They're just excellent performance cars that everyone has forgotten about. And this hot Mondeo, it certainly nails that description. 
In standard trim, 162 kilowatts might not sound all that impressive, but the Mondeo is about so much more than just sheer power. It's a good looking, understated thing. It's dripping in kit. It's incredibly comfortable. It's supremely practical. And thanks to it being full of airbags and a clever crash structure, it's safe as houses. Plus, Ford seem to be on something of a mission to impress drivers with this generation of cars, as everything from the Fiesta, even through to the Ford Transit, actually drove really well for what they were. And these impressive dynamic characteristics only increased with their performance models, hence why the Mondeo is such an enjoyable car to drive. Plus, being a turbocharged five-cylinder, even with just a performance exhaust system fitted, it sounds amazing. Actually, speaking of aftermarket performance parts, as this engine, or variants of it, have been fitted to everything from various Volvos to the Focus ST, or the XR5 as we call it here, and even to, look granted in modified form, to the Mark II Focus RS, the amount of modifications that you can do to these cars and the results that you can achieve are incredible. Plus, as pricing kicks off here in Australia from around about $8,000, using that $15,000 as your budget means that you're gonna have plenty left over to uh, turn up the wick. Negatives? Well, they do suffer from a few gremlins and it is critical that they have a full and thorough service history as they do not respond well to a lack of maintenance. Which is something that doesn't seem to affect our next car anywhere near as much. And I'll be honest with you, until we researched part one of this list, I didn't even know this thing existed in the first place. It's the Toyota Blademaster G. Named after what we assume must be a 1980s wrapper from a sci-fi movie, the Blade Master G is basically a Corolla, or an Oris as many markets know it, from 2006 to 2012 that some crazy engineers at Toyota went and jammed a 206 kilowatt 3.5 litre V6 engine in the front of. Let's just get our heads around that for a second. This is a Toyota Corolla with a 206 kilowatt 3.5 litre V6 engine, and it puts out 353 newton metres. 353 newton metres in a Corolla. That is insane. Now, to put that into perspective, a Mark VI Volkswagen Golf GTI of the same year and the same asking price puts out 155 kilowatts and 280 newton metres. That's over 50 kilowatts and 70 newton metres less than the Toyota's V6. And it's not just any V6 either. It's the bulletproof and enduring 2GR FE. That thing has powered everything from the Toyota Avalon and the Orion and the Camry to the Lexus ES and RX models through to the Lotus Evora and in supercharged form it's going to be the engine that powers the new Lotus Amira. Overall look this engine is awesome but to make this crazy combination work Toyota have heavily revised the suspension and brakes to attempt to get all of that power to the ground. The interior's materials have been improved as the Blade Master G was the premium spec Corolla and the exterior has been altered from the donor Corolla so it stands out from its consumer friendly sibling. Granted in standard form the dynamics are they're a little bit skewed towards comfort and luxury over handling and performance but let's be honest that's pretty easily fixed and yes it is front wheel drive only and that amount of power and torque going through the front wheels isn't everyone's cup of sake. And yes, the whole car is somewhat dominated by its incredible engine, but Ferrari in the 1960s and 70s basically built its reputation on incredible engines being fitted to sort of kind of decent cars. So surely taking that recipe and using a practical five door hatchback as the basis results in an incredibly good thing. Buying one here in Australia is getting easier as more and more are landing here on our shores as grey imports and the same thing is happening globally. Pricing kicks off from around about $14,000 with the really mint examples topping this budget just a little bit. But remember, this is a Toyota and it's imported from Japan so the reliability is going to be excellent, it won't have travelled many kilometres and thanks to it sharing the majority of its parts with locally available Toyotas, if something were to go wrong, parts and labour should be inexpensive and easy. Now guys, we would love to feature a Blade Master G for a full review on Redriven. So if you own one or you know somebody that owns one and the car's located in New South Wales and you're happy for us to film it, please let us know in the comments. Now, before we get to our final contender, I've got to ask a favor. If you're enjoying this video, can you please hit the like, subscribe, and bell buttons and share Redriven as much as you can? All we want to do is keep making car content for you guys, but the only way we can do that is with your support and hitting those buttons and sharing Redriven. That's all the help we need. That'd be awesome. Right, a car that has been suggested basically since Redriven began, and for those that have requested it and are fans of it, yes, you're exactly right. This thing deserves far more attention than it gets. It's this Skoda Octavia RS. 
For those of you that don't know what this is, or you don't receive the brilliant Octavia RS in your local market, think of it as a Volkswagen Golf GTI in wagon, or sedan-y kind of five-door hatch form. Now, there have been a copious amount of Octavia RS models available over the years, but for this budget, here in Australia, you're gonna be looking predominantly at the second-generation Octavias in RS147 TSI trim, or possibly third-generation Octavias in 162 TSI trim. But to get behind the wheel of those third generation cars, you're gonna to have to be an absolute master at haggling the price. Now the Golf GTI has been and is seen as a reliable daily driver during the week while still being able to tear up a racetrack or a country road on the weekends. It's the perfect compromise between bold and boring, fast and average, and thrilling and relatively reliable, and it's easy to see why it's so popular. But because of their popularity, Golf GTIs are just bloody everywhere. But the Skoda offers basically the same levels of exciting fun stuff with even more practicality when it comes to the boring stuff, which makes you wonder why more people don't opt for the Skoda over its Volkswagen sibling. Maybe there's just a confusion over what Skoda even is. Not everybody understands that the Czech Republic brand is actually technically just a more budget conscious Volkswagen. But for many, Skoda is just a bit too different and it lacks the brand panache that comes with say Volkswagen and Audi. In terms of the performance, look power wise, the 147 TSI puts out, funnily enough, 147 kilowatts. And the 162 TSI, yep, you guessed it, 162 kilowatts. But like the other cars on this list, the Octavia is about so much more than just power and acceleration. This thing, like the Golf GTI, is so much fun to drive. And also like the Golf GTI, breathe on the mechanicals just a little bit with some intelligent tuning and you can end up with a conservative looking, comfortable and hugely practical giant killer. But it's not all good news. Some early models, along with many Volkswagen products with the same transmission fitted, have shown issues with their DSG gearboxes. Basically, the DSG can wear prematurely and fail, and the repairs are bloody expensive. Plus, you can expect all of the usual Volkswagen issues that come with these particular power plants, like water pump failure, electronic gremlins, and all of the issues related to feeble engine bay plastics. But do your homework, know what you're getting yourself into, find a perfectly maintained example with a faultless service history, and the Octavia RS can be a cracker of a car. Guys, what did you think of the list? Let us know in those comments below. And remember, can you please hit the like, subscribe, and bell buttons, and share Redriven as much as you can? Again, the more you do of all that sort of stuff, the more of this content we can make for you. And that's all we want to do. See you next time. Two of our top five performance car underrated. Underrated, I forgot the underrated word. With sublime levels of suspension and chassis tuning, you word. Various larger and more powerful Morgan, Morgan, Morgan. And using a five door Hitting those buttons and sharing Redriven, that's our oh, bastard. Plus, Ford seemed to be on something of a mission to impress drivers with this. Here we go.